And then the evolutionary process from GATT in 1986, it became World Trade Organization. And then they really get underway. Uh, Ford, General Motors, Chrysler, we're all planting plants in Mexico and Bangladesh and India and China back before 1980. But nobody paid any attention. I did because, you know, that's what I do for a living. But we told people they didn't want to listen. Uh, Mr. Chapman, you just said that the, that they're closing the GM plants and moving jobs overseas. Do you feel that there's going to be a backlash on Bank of America, who laid off over 8,000 here in the United States and are now hiring thousands overseas to do what kind of jobs, the jobs that used to be here? Yes, and they are doing those kind of jobs, and uh, there's been no backlash. Uh, the backlash will come when... Uh, there's 35 percent unemployment, which would be probably about uh, uh, two to two and a half years from now. And people, many, many people have lost their homes, their jobs, their vehicles, and they're running down and living under a bridge with their trolleys from the uh, supermarket. And the kids are starving, and then they're going to do something. And so that's when it's going to happen, because... They are too dumb to see what's being done to them. And it's not only America. It's Europe and many other nations that are being raked over the coals here. From, uh, from New York, Mr. Chapman, is uh, the, the derivatives, are they a, a worldwide phenomenon? And what is the effect on the world economy uh, as these derivatives uh, come on the auction block this week? Well, derivatives are all over the world, but I would say that uh, 90 to 95 percent are in the United States and Great Britain, and uh, perhaps 10 percent might be in, in Europe, and the rest of the world has very little. And so uh, they're going to have exposure in the, in the way of fallout. Uh, because as the world economy goes down, uh, the, the markets aren't going to be there for the things that they produced. I mean, it's happening everywhere. I mean, you read the International Forecaster. I mean, we've got it all there. We, you, you can look under any section. You can find out what's going on, generally speaking, with most economies. And it's not good. I mean, nobody has it good. Even Switzerland says that they're fighting to keep out of deflation. And they've lowered interest rates to essentially zero. And they're buying corporate paper in the market, which is unheard of. The Swiss have never done such a thing before. And so they, even their currency is now suspect. Mr. Chairman, uh, the, the United States Treasury uh, Department is preparing a Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing for Chrysler uh, that could come as soon as next week. Uh, what, will, what will this uh, effect have on uh, the U.S. economy and especially the possibility of a company collapse? You say two and a half years before we get to 35 percent unemployment. I'm looking at 35 percent unemployment here in the met greater metro area of St. Louis if Chrysler closes. Well, you know, there's going to be islands of desperation and there's going to be islands of relative prosperity. Uh, you know, it isn't an even thing where everybody goes down the toilet together. And, yes, unemployment uh, in St. Louis, uh, just like Detroit, uh, may uh, uh, the U6 unemployment may be over 30%. Nationally, by my figures, my U6 figures, based upon the calculations made on the formula that was used in 1980 before they Mickey Mouse it is 19.2%. John Williams, who's another economist, has him at 19.8%. And so we are really already at almost 20% nationally. Now, what is U6? First of all, it's something the government puts together, only they lie about it. And what it is is short-term unemployment all the people who aren't collecting checks from the state anymore and all those discouraged workers who have recently 
not gotten their checks anymore. So people who have been out of work in the last two or three or four years, that's 20%. There's another one called U3. That's 25%. That's people who lost their jobs from 1990 onward. Some of them have never gone back to work because that's when they started kicking everybody out of their job who was over 40 so they could hire 22-year-olds and hope that they could do the job and pay them half as much. This has been a long, degenerative process. didn't happen yesterday. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you that want to call in, the phone number is 347-308-8047. Repeat, the area code is 347 347- Three zero eight eight zero four seven. Those of internationally, you want to call on Skype. I have Skype set up where you can call through there, and you just call in my name, Drew Malone. Dot Rains R A I N E S, and the the three three eyes, the lower case eyes. Uh, I'm in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. You can do your search, add me to your Skype, and call in, and you can ask Mr. Chapman uh, a question. Uh, my next one comes in from Florida, Mr. Chapman. Uh, how does uh, how do you, what is your feelings about Germany and the German fail failing to bail out uh, with their new bail, bailout plan? Merkel is refusing to uh, off to accept the offer. What's next? Well, I think uh, Germany has collectively decided they're going to for, uh, going to depression now, and I, I think that's being reflected in the European Union. And I wrote uh, yes, for yesterday, yesterday's issue um, a piece on Spain, which is a perfect example of what's going on. And France and Germany, particularly Germany, is just not going to bail out those countries. They're not going to do it. I mean, they've got enough of their own problems. They say, look, if this is the way it's going to be, this is the way it's going to be, and let's go for it. Let's have our depression now. Well, that is not in the plans of the Illuminati. They don't want that. They want every nation to slide down slowly together on an extended period of time so they can have another war to distract people and blame all of the problems domestically, internationally, economically, and financially on this war that they're creating. I mean, this is nothing new. I mean, it's been going on for centuries. Leadership saying, well, how do we get out of this mess? I mean, we stole the public blind. You know, what do we do for a cover? Ah, let's 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 attack the Athenians over there, or let's attack the Gauls over there. That's nothing new. I had four years of Latin. Caesar built more bridges and tore down more bridges than anybody in the history of mankind. I know. I had four years of Latin. <laughs> And they so what am I seeing not, here? Uh, everything you're looking at, everything you're looking at is nothing new. That's how I'm able oh, to make these predictions. There's no magic here. You say magic. Just take a look at what the other guys uh, did. Yeah. You, uh, Betty comes in from California. Mr. Chapman, you say magic. Magic, apparently it's a horse race. However, who do you feel will be in the top five major of the top five major countries to fall into a Weimar Weimar type collapse. Well, it, it's it's very evident presently that of the two of the bigger countries financially and economically, particularly financially in the world, are the United States and Great Britain, and they are already on the way down the tubes. In fact, I think that Great Britain is is in such a, a terrible mess that they're going to have to try to get a loan from the IMF. And I don't think they qualify. I wrote about it in this last issue. I don't think they could get a loan. I mean, they are a mess. And it's going to get a lot worse. In fact, crime's gone up substantially there, especially with knives. Now that they took the guns away from people, they're running around with knives killing each other. We just had a we just had a robber over in Bangor, Maine, attack a girl in broad daylight with a knife, uh, to, and took her purse. Thank God the girl wasn't hurt. If she, if yeah. if uh, Maine would have allowed people to have guns, 
uh, maybe that girl would have been able to pull a, a even a twenty two with a long with a long rifle. I mean a long uh, a long shell, twenty two longs in her in her twenty two caliber gun. She could have at least ended him off, put a stop to it. Well, that's that's one answer to it. And the other one, when someone's got a knife, is send your kids to Taekwondo. Yeah. I had four children attack my granddaughter in the schoolyard. And she fended them off, and she said to me, what do I do? I said, Taekwondo. And next month she gets her black <laughs> belt. Taekwondo. <laughs> and uh, and uh, now she can defend herself. And if somebody comes after her with a knife, uh, I am sure I know where it will be sticking out of. <laughs> 